In the last few videos, we discussed the reaction of amines with acids, one of the main types of reactions that amines undergo. Here we're going to look at another major type of reactions that amines undergo, that is nucleophilic acyl substitution by reacting an amine with an acyl halide. Let's take a look and unpack what all of that means. So we'll start by considering the general term nucleophilic acyl substitution, since it's one that we haven't really encountered before. And what's going to happen in a nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction is we're going to start with a molecule that has a carbonyl group, an R group here, which the R can be an alkyl group or a hydrogen atom. And then over here on the right, X is going to represent a leaving group that will break away during the course of the reaction. And what's going to happen in this nucleophilic acyl substitution is that we'll bring in, as the term implies in nucleophilic acyl substitution, a nucleophile, NU, and what will happen is that the nucleophile will replace the leaving group in order to give us a product where we have substituted out the leaving group X and replaced it with the nucleophile in the organic product of this reaction, and the leaving group will have left. So in applying this toward the reaction of amines, what we are going to look at for amines is a scenario where the amine is the nucleophile and it's reacting with an acyl halide as the carbonyl containing compound. So the acyl halide will have R, which is an alkyl group or a hydrogen, directly bonded to a carbonyl and that carbonyl will be bonded to a chlorine or a bromine are generally the two halogens there that are excellent leaving groups for this reaction. It will react with an amine, which I'll plug in as NR3. And what's going to occur in this reaction is that the nitrogen atom, to go through the mechanism here for a general reaction, the nitrogen being basic is inherently nucleophilic. It's going to come in and attack the carbonyl carbon like so, forcing the pi bond up onto the oxygen to give us our intermediate, where our intermediates will look like so. We'll have an oxygen anion directly bonded to our carbon, and that carbon is bonded to the R group, bonded to the chlorine, and I'll show in red the new covalent bond that links it to the nitrogen of the amine. So we have NR3 with a positive charge on the nitrogen atom. And now keeping in mind that the chlorine is a very good leaving group, a much better leaving group than the nitrogen or the oxygen, what will happen then is that we are going to reform the carbonyl group in the second step of the mechanism. Carbonyl group reforms as the leaving group leaves, and that will bring us onward here. So I'm going to catch up by writing out the description of each step. First step was that the nucleophilic amine attacked the carbonyl carbon, which was the electrophile. And then here, since we have a good leaving group, a chlorine, which we saw in SN1 and SN2 reactions was a very capable leaving group. Same thing is true here. And in this case, what's happening is that the carbonyl group will reform by the oxygen lone pair electrons coming down and that weak carbon chlorine bond breaks, sending the electrons with the chlorine to release the chlorine anion. So second step here in words is that the carbonyl reforms as the leaving group leaves. And that leaving group is generally going to be a chlorine or a bromine because those are both very electronegative halogen atoms that are capable of handling that negative charge and being very stable with the negative charge. So now we go ahead and plug in our carbonyl group there, our R group, and we have NR3 plus on our nitrogen. And we also have our chloride anion that we have created as a result of that step as well. Now, when we get to this point, one thing that we have mentioned previously is that generally at the end of reactions, we usually adjust the pH or adjust the conditions so that we don't have 
cations or anions. So at this point, we could leave this potentially as a salt, but what's realistically going to happen is that we would react, assuming that we have a proton to remove here, meaning that one of these R groups is a hydrogen. If one of those R groups is a hydrogen, plug that hydrogen in like so, and then in the third step, we deprotonate to remove that proton and create a final product, which will be an amide. So to show that happening, we can bring in another unit of the amine because the amine, as we look around here at what we have available in the reaction mixture, the amine is the best, strongest base that we have. So I'm gonna plug in my amine, which I'll just abbreviate as N R3, where R is our generic placeholder. So the nitrogen comes in, acting as the base, grabs the proton from the acid, forcing that nitrogen-hydrogen bond to break, and providing us with our amide functional group in the product of this reaction. So I have NR2 now, lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, and then we would also have NR3H because the nitrogen has picked up a proton. So it'd be NR3H plus with a positive charge on the nitrogen, giving us our final organic product of this reaction is an amide. And so in the nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction, of an amine with an acyl halide, the product of that reaction is going to be an amide. So let's do an example of this where we are looking at an actual molecule rather than something that has just R groups filling in as placeholders here. We'll go through the mechanism for it and we'll predict the final product. So let's now take a look at this reaction where we're taking aniline and we're reacting with the acyl halide shown here. So in this reaction, much like before, what we want to do first is keeping in mind that the nitrogen is a capable nucleophile and we have it paired up with a molecule that has a very positively polarized carbonyl group. What's going to happen is that the nitrogen atom is going to come on over and form a covalent bond to the carbonyl, forcing the electrons up onto the carbonyl oxygen. So let's go ahead and draw out what we have created here. So we'd have our aromatic ring from aniline directly bonded to the nitrogen. It's still going to be NH2, so I'll plug NH2 in there. And now we have a new covalent bond linking that in red to the carbon that is directly bonded to the oxygen. The oxygen is no longer a carbonyl oxygen, but instead is a single bond there. And we also have connected there our chlorine atom, and we have our five-membered ring as well, like so. And we'd have a positive charge then on our nitrogen atom at this point in time. So that's our first step of the mechanism. That was our step where the nucleophilic nitrogen comes in, attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, forcing the pi bond up onto the oxygen. Now at this point, we have our sp3 hybridized carbon right here, and we have that paired with a good leaving group. And so due to the fact that we have an excellent leaving group there, weak bond here between carbon and chlorine, what's going to happen is that that bond is going to be prone to breaking. So we break that bond away. And in order to make the system as stable as possible, simultaneously, the pi bond reforms so that we don't have to create a carbocation during this reaction mechanism. So step two here was that we reformed the carbonyl as the leaving group left. And we chose to make this the leaving group because the chloride anion is a very stable, capable leaving group. So on the product side here, this chloride anion, very, very happy to exist, just like in your salt shaker, chloride anion is also very stable, happily existing as is. So there's our five-membered ring, our nitrogen as NH2, like so, with a positive charge because it has that additional bond to our aromatic ring, like so. And now at this point, we're almost done here. Our third step is our deprotonation step in order to create the amide product. And so to do the deprotonation step, what we do is we bring in another unit of amine. And I'm going to breathe that as 
pH in H2, keeping in mind that pH refers to the aromatic ring. So this structure I'm showing here is the abbreviated version of aniline because pH indicates an aromatic ring. We take the nitrogen lone pair of electrons, bring those over to abstract the proton here. Show that bond going on to the nitrogen like so by breaking the NH bond. And now we have our six membered ring coming on to the nitrogen here is now just an NH rather than an NH2. We have our carbonyl group, and then we have our five membered ring like so, giving us our final product of this reaction, including our three step mechanism of the nucleophilic addition and then the loss of a leaving group to make this ultimately a substitution reaction where in the end scenario, what we've done is we've replaced the chlorine leaving group with the nitrogen atom and whatever R groups are attached to that nitrogen in our final product. So we'll do another example now. And in this example, we mix it up a bit by asking what combination of acyl halide and amine will yield the product below. So this forces us to think backwards from our final product, which we have indicated here, and ask ourselves what would be the structure of the acyl halide plus the amine that would allow us to yield that product. And we keep in mind that what's going to happen, generically speaking in these reactions, is that we'll have our acyl halide such as an acyl chloride with its R group attached there, R being the carbon chain here, a ring or whatever else is there, reacting with our amine, which I'll abbreviate as NR3, where R is a hydrogen or carbon atoms, depending upon what the needs of the reaction are. And what's going to happen during the course of the reaction is that the chlorine atom is going to break away. That's why I've put the squiggly line there in green. And it's going to be replaced with the nitrogen and the nitrogen's R groups, or the nitrogen and its attached carbon atoms. So in thinking about what specific reactants we could use here for our acyl halide and amine in this particular example, we similarly retrosynthetically think about this is the connection that we need to make in the molecule that connection of the amide bond between nitrogen and the carbonyl group. That's what we are breaking here in the acyl halide to make that new carbon nitrogen bond. And so thinking backwards, it's going to be this portion of the molecule on the left that has to be derived from the acyl halide. And so I'm just going to put a little circle around that to indicate that that has to come from the acyl halide as we plan this reaction. On the other hand, the portion here on the right has to come from the amine. So we plug those two together on the starting material side of this. So from our acyl halide, we need a aromatic ring directly bonded to a carbonyl and that carbonyl needs to be bonded to the chlorine, which will break away and be replaced with the nitrogen atom and the R groups that are attached to that nitrogen atom. So then our other reactant, our amine, is going to correspond to our nitrogen with the methyl group and the isobutyl group attached. And then additionally, that nitrogen to have a complete octet needs to have a hydrogen on it. So now we're set up such that just to do a mini mechanism here to make sure that we're on the right track, the nitrogen lone pair of electrons comes over, attacks the carbonyl group here, and that's going to be the bond that forms between the nitrogen and the carbonyl group in our final product here. That's the bond that I'm highlighting with my laser pointer right now is the bond that was formed by that green electron pushing arrow here. And the nitrogen would retain its methyl group, its isobutyl group, and it would ultimately lose this hydrogen so that we didn't um, have a positive charge on the nitrogen atom in our final product. So the two reactants that you should have come up with for this are these two reactants right here. So we'll give one more example a try here, which is show how to synthesize acetanilide via a nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. The first thing we need to do is be aware of the structure of acetanilide, or we are not really gonna be able to determine how to synthesize that using nucleophilic acyl substitution. So acetanilide was a molecule that had a nitrogen directly attached to the aromatic ring, 
and then it had our two carbon group here with a carbonyl group. So it has this amide bond, which leads us to conclude that it can be synthesized via a nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction like we just learned about by reacting in our general schematic. We reacted an acyl halide with an amine to give that amide product. And so we need to fill in what the exact details are here. So again, we think retrosynthetically about this bond that I'm highlighting in green is the one that we are going to be making during the reaction. So when thinking backwards, we're thinking about that having been broken. So working backwards here, the amine would have to correspond to the left-hand side of this molecule here because that's where we have the nitrogen. So this part is gonna be from the amine. And the other portion that I'm gonna show in red here that is the two carbon group with the carbonyl is going to be from the acyl halide. And so now stitching that all together, we have our starting amine, which would be our aromatic ring directly bonded to NH. And then it's going to have to be NH2 to have a complete octet. We have that lone pair of electrons there as well, which you don't necessarily have to show, but I'm showing here to be explicit. And then our Acyl halide would have our chlorine atom directly bonded to the carbonyl. And then whatever R group was here, which in this case was just this methyl group here, is going to be attached there. And so we'd be creating the final desired product by taking the nitrogen lone pair of electrons. Those come over, form a covalent bond to the carbonyl. Ultimately, that chlorine leaving group will leave, giving us as our product a carbon-nitrogen bond between the carbonyl group and the nitrogen hence creating this amide as our final product of acetanilide. So a way to synthesize acetanilide is to react aniline with this molecule, acetyl chloride.